Hello. Today we're going to be talking about a topic called critical transitions. To give a very brief and simple explanation, systems like population systems or something in thermal physics or even in economy or the climate, something more general, exist in stable equilibriums. But you can have a system for which there is more than one stable equilibrium and it will only exist in one at a time. But changes in the conditions can cause the equilibrium which it exists in to become unstable, at which point the system transitions to the another equilibrium. That's what we call a critical transition. So in this series, I'm going to give several examples of systems which undergo critical transitions and discuss the warning signs that a system is at a point where it's about to undergo a critical transition. But in order to do that, we need to get a good understanding of dynamical systems so that we can study where the fixed points are and how these stable fixed points can change with differing conditions. So let's jump right in. Mathematically, a dynamical system is some system in which the state, which can have more than one variable representing it, so I will call that x as a vector, the rate of change of the state with respect to time is a function of the state in which it's in and time. However, we will be mostly talking about systems which are time independent, in which case the rate of change of the state over time is just simply a function of the state itself. That's called an autonomous dynamical system. Now to further simplify for this introduction video, I'm only going to talk about systems in one dimension. So if you want to represent that mathematically, just get rid of that vector. We're just studying one variable x. That doesn't mean that there could be other parameters. It could be some kind of parametric with a's and b's in it, which are real numbers. But the thing which we're studying is the rate of change of a single variable with respect to time. So suppose we know the dynamics of the system in one dimension. It might look something like this. This function would be some kind of cubic equation. It intersects the, the x-axis in several different places. Now here I've plotted x, which is our variable, against dx by dt, which is the rate of change. So if it's a place where it's intersecting this x-axis, then that's a place where the rate of change is zero. So for this particular graph, there are three places where the function intersects the rate of change equals zero line. Now, because these are the places where the rate of change of the system is equal to zero, these are fixed points. If your system exists in one of these states for the variable x, then it's not going to change over time. So we call those, naturally, fixed points. But crucially, there are two different kinds of fixed points. Let's look at this graph in a bit more detail. Before this fixed point here, the graph is above zero. It's positive. The rate of change specifically is positive. So if your system is in a state for the variable x before this fixed point, then as the rate of change is, going, is positive, the state of the system in terms of the variable x is going to increase. So we can represent that by drawing some lines on the graph. Now, when it gets to the fixed point here, the rate of change is now zero, so it stops. So basically, for x smaller than this fixed point, because the rate of change is greater than zero, the state is going to increase all the way up to this fixed point and then stay at equilibrium there. Now let's have a look what's happening here. Here, the line which represents the rate of change of the state is less than zero. So that means that in this part of the graph here, the system's state x is going to decrease back to this fixed point here, this equilibrium point. And then again, here the line is above zero, so the variable x, which represents the state of the system, is going to increase up to this point, where the rate of change is then zero. And in this part of the graph, the line is below zero. So again, that's going to decrease. So these three fixed points, as you can see from the graph, have 
different conditions. For the first fixed point here, everything that's lower than it is increasing, and everything that's above it up to the next fixed point is decreasing. So any state around this fixed point is going to tend towards the fixed point. So we call that stable. Because any perturbation of the state from the equilibrium point will cause the state to return back to equilibrium. Now this one here, below the fixed point, the state is decreasing away from the fixed point, and above the fixed point, the state is also increasing away from the fixed point. So that means that if you perturb the state around this equilibrium, the state is going to move away. So we call that unstable. And then finally, this last fixed point was exactly the same as the first one. For a state variable x just below the fixed point, the state will return to equilibrium. And for a state variable x just above the fixed point, the variable x will decrease back to equilibrium. So we call that one stable as well. So you can see that this arbitrary dynamical system which I've drawn has three different fixed points which we can classify as stable or unstable. Now any fixed point in only one dimension will have some stable and unstable fixed points, unless of course the graph doesn't intersect the axis at all, but then there wouldn't be much point in studying that. Interestingly, dynamical systems is a qualitative science. We're not interested in calculating anything, we just want to know what's happening at fixed points. Are they stable? Are they unstable? and what can affect the stability of them. Now, let's say I change the conditions of this dynamical system. That means that I'm varying some constant in this equation. Well, that's going to change what this line looks like. So suppose I change it in such a way that I kind of move the entire graph up a little bit. Then that's going to cause these two stable and unstable fixed points to move together along the axis to a point where they eventually collide and annihilate is the word that we use, and the graph will end up only intersecting the axis in one place. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw that. So this is what the line looks like after we've changed the parameter. Now the line is only intersecting in one place, and as you can see, for a value of x below this fixed point here, the rate of change is positive, so the state will increase towards the equilibrium. And then for a value of x above the state is negative the rate of change of the state, sorry, is negative. So the state variable x will decrease towards this fixed point. So this one is obviously stable. But notice what happened when I changed the parameters in order to change the shape of this graph. We went from having three fixed points to only one fixed point. And before we had a stable fixed point, an unstable point and a stable point, and then we annihilated the lower stable and unstable points to be left with just a single stable one. So suppose our dynamical system had originally been in the lower stable equilibrium. Well, by changing the conditions, we've then made that position unstable, and the system will have to tend towards this higher stable equilibrium point. Now, in the real world, we actually do see systems that have the same dynamics as this. This is an example which could represent a population of some kind of insect. In fact, it's originally from a... It looks a lot like a system which represents a population of insects being eaten by something over time. In which case, the transition from the lower stable equilibrium to the upper stable equilibrium, which is caused by changing the conditions of the system would cause an outbreak of insects, which might be undesirable. So this is a really important thing to study when we're considering dynamical systems, because this is basically what determines whether or not something bad is about to happen. So the point of this series is going to be to study what warning signs we can use to predict whether or not a critical transition such as this, where creating and destroying stable states forces the system to change to a new point of stability will are going to happen.
Now, if you want to get a good understanding of this topic, I recommend you watch some other videos on dynamical systems. I don't really have the time to explain this at a complete beginner's level, and that's not really the point of this series. I want to talk about the warning signs for these critical transitions. So I'll put some videos in the description, which you can watch if you want to get a better understanding of this. So a lot of this series is going to study something called critical slowing down. Now, when I originally gave the example here, in which there are three fixed points, a stable one, an unstable one, and another stable fixed point, with the line intersecting the axis in three different places, I said that the system would return to equilibrium, but we never talked about how quickly it would return to equilibrium, we just said that over time it would do. Now, critical slowing down is the property that when you come to a bifurcation point, which is where stable and unstable equilibrium are created or destroyed, the rate at which the system returns to equilibrium decreases. So when we're studying systems in the real world, we can use this property to determine whether or not we're going to undergo a bifurcation, which will cause the system to undergo a critical transition to a new stable equilibrium point. Now that's just about it for this introductory video, but my next video is going to be explaining critical slowing down mathematically, and then from there I'll use that to determine some other properties, and then we're going to study some real systems and what the warning signals are in those systems that a critical transition is going to happen. So I hope that's been a good introduction to this topic. I do recommend that you watch some other videos if you've never come across this before, because this was more of a recap video than an explanation. Uh, you could really do to get a better understanding of dynamical systems and bifurcations if you really want to be comfortable with what we're going to be covering in the next videos. So I look forward to seeing you next time.